Good evening. Thank you for joining us for this evening's production of Dear Mr. President, Sincerely We. Uh, it's already been six full months since the last time we were here on Zoom as a theater company um, for the One Act Festival. So this is our second Zoom theater production. Um, it is going to be an exciting season ahead uh, still filled with new challenges and new beauty. And um, we're so grateful that you're here on this opening night of our theater season. In a moment, we are going to press play on Dear Mr. President, Sincerely We. Um, first, I wanna acknowledge that as we have found through yet another set of tragic and unprecedented events over the past couple of days, we live in a volatile time where caring for one another and listening to each other proves its value every single day. And um, luckily for all of us, this is a play that gives us a wonderful opportunity to sit back and listen to the voices of our friends, our kids, our students, our neighbors um, to listen. So uh, I wanna start by making three brief shout outs. Um, first of all, um, in the 10 plus years uh, that I've been with Thomas Edison High School Theater, one of the partners that we've never really gotten to enjoy working with is Project Success. And um, as we were getting started with this show, I knew we needed a little bit of extra help that we were trying to do something a little bit different. And I called Laura Garcia at Project Success and um, had a couple of really wonderful brainstorming sessions with her. And she delivered with so many great ideas and resources and um, the resulting collaboration um, with, with uh, Rose and Katie from Project Success, our, our good friends, longtime collaborators at Edison. We're so grateful for Project Success and all they've, the, they've done for us with this show. Um, to briefly take a, an, another second to uh, give a shout out to the technical director of the theater program, Mr. Carl Reinhardt, um, who has been with the theater company for every bit of the 10 years that I've been around, um, is, is a dear friend and collaborator and continues to uh, rise to the occasion uh, when we are trying to do crazy and amazing and different things and um, grateful for his partnership. Um, and finally, uh, to welcome Nora Montañez Patterson, who you'll hear from in uh, just a moment, who will uh, start us off today and then facilitate a short conversation with some of our student artists after the show. Um, your ticket tonight is free. We'd love to ask for a pay what you can donation. So you'd go to the edisonactivitycouncil.com and click donate. And if you mention theater in the memo line, uh, that helps support Thomas Edison High School Theater. So thank you very, very much for being here with us. And we're gonna press play, enjoy the show. Um, Nora, we can't hear the video. All right, friends, we'll try that again. Hello, my name is Nora Montañez Patterson, and I'm the director to Dear Mr. President, Sincerely We. 
Today, you will see five Thomas Edison performing artists create a piece that illuminates how our current society and the last four years have shaped them. Supported by Thomas Edison video editors who have worked collaboratively to create the piece that you're about to see tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight and wherever you are and wherever we are finding you. We hope that you enjoy the show and we hope that you join us afterwards for a small talk back with some of the artists and our crew. And now, dear Mr. President, sincerely, we. Mexico, pay for that wall. Mark my words. More election stuff. Oh, some news. What? This can't be happening. It can't. My phone. Hmm? Oh my god. Election news. You won. Suck it, Trump! Hi, I'm Maxine. You know, in the past four years, I have changed a lot. The world has changed a lot. Things have changed a lot. In four years, there are almost 1,460 days. There are almost 35,050 hours in four years. Four years feels like no time yet so much time. My life has changed. My family has changed. People I am friends with and how I am friends with them has changed. Four years ago, I was a middle schooler in sixth grade. Sixth grade, I was 11 years old. I would wear some leggings that never really matched my t-shirt I wore with some converse, preferably black. That's so crazy to me because sixth grade feels like yesterday, but four years sounds like forever. Other than how long four years ago is, four years ago, a president was elected. That president has let people's hatred run rampant. The sexism, racism, and more things the president has done are disturbing. Four years, there have been laws, changes, and events that have made things so different. The incompetence of a president says so much about our country. How stupid this man and the evil he radiates is disgusting. In the last year even, there has been a global pandemic that has been ruling. People have lost jobs, their sanity, and even lives. How did we allow for a president to not believe in science to wear a mask? Or even global warming? Science. Scientists. The things this man has done are despicable, as many presidents in the past 
alike. America's dark history of harming so many people, we continue to let people in office that harm others. Human beings. This president has let over 250,000 people die. 22 million people have lost their jobs. People have lost safety and security. People have lost loved ones. Kids are isolated from friends in school and we're given long days of staring at a screen. The way we do things has entirely changed, yet this man has done nothing. Nothing. He has and never will be good. What about all the children at the border who were put in cages, literal cages, and separated from their families? What about the women this man has assaulted? What about the police brutality of African Americans in this country? What about the school to prison pipeline? What about the trans people that have and continue to be killed? As the world is withering, this man is our orange and self-centered president. He is our leader. That doesn't make sense to me. It isn't okay that people think this person is any way good. He said global warming is real as animals continue to go extinct and the ocean becomes more and more polluted. He doesn't care about you or me. He cares about himself. This man is a menace to our country, yet people continue to support him. How you can support a man who does nothing but harm people in and outside of this country, I cannot understand. How you can decide to support a person who should be in jail disturbs me, baffles me. How can you do that? How can we continue to let the world go dark? How can we continue to let people be disturbing? This man should have never been president. Why are we having all these people from shitful countries coming here? Our president has always degraded women, and we've always let him see see. Hello, my friends. It's me, Mark Miralanda. No one knows I'm an alien, though, do they? I'm debating racist know it all, Donald Trump, in just a little bit. It's my first debate, so I'm feeling nervous and excited. It should be okay, though, because this guy doesn't know anything about politics. Why would any Trump run for president? And why would people re-elect this jock? Anyways, hope you guys will tune in and watch the debate at 7 p.m. It's pitiful. Devastating. Back in the day, it was different than now. In 2009, when Barack Obama was president, everything was good eight. Everything was good end. Did you understand? We had affordable health care. President Obama implemented a strong economy in America. Started to appear more progressive. After Donald Trump was elected, our nation fell apart. We're in the middle of a pandemic that could have been resolved if the necessary precautions were taken. At the beginning, there's a need to abolish the issue of systematic racism in America. Medic equally is once again being debated. Do you really want to reelect a president who doesn't care? about your well-being, vote for me, because I will make a magical safe place. I will love and support you, no matter what your culture is, no matter where you're from. Make peace on us. 2020 was a scatty year. We, we lost loved ones, jobs, homes, and our ability to go out and freely socialize. We had wildfires. Rights, 
lockdowns and many deaths. Those things can't change, but many of them could have been prevented. As your new president, I will make it my mission to focus on the problem, prevent new ones, and help us have a better future. We can now project the winner of the presidential race. CNN projects Donald Trump wins the presidency. The business tycoon and TV personality capping his improbable political journey with an astounding upset victory. Donald J. Trump will become the 45th president of the United States, defeating Hillary Clinton in a campaign unlike anything we've seen in our lifetime. After four long, tense days, we've reached a historic moment in this election. We can now project the winner of the presidential race. CNN projects Joseph R. Biden Jr. is elected the 46th president of the United States, winning the White House and denying President Trump a second term. Congratulations. You won the election. The job is not over yet. This country has been divided in the past four years, so it's your job to unite it. This country has also gone through a lot. Racism, COVID-19, and other stuff. So it's your job to help find a solution and guide the people towards a better future. I wish you good luck, Mr. President. Trump won't leave graciously, but kids can and should. Trump rages over the election, ignoring the rampage of violence. Dear Mr. President, why is it that I open Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter? I see reports of massive shootings. The fake news that you call the media is digging their hands for truth. A truth that is very devastating that a president like you is failing to be a leader who acknowledges our needs seriously. Kids, adults, seniors are getting killed like animals on a hunting day. Why? Because there isn't a gun reform. No, humans are meant to grow to grow and make positive changes in our nation. I'm scared. I'm scared if a person who carries a gun will open the doors of my school and tear many lives apart. Many people are scared, not just me. Many of these massacres should have poked their heart to sit and think of those families who lost their loved ones. Question yourself, what is it that you want to do to prevent many bullets from taking down American lives? You see, fast action was needed from you, Mr. President. But what did you do? Your ass went on to play golf, 
Although you suck, I bet Tiger Woods has a smirk on his face, watching you hold that golf stick with your messed up hair. At the White House, there's beautiful plants and trees. Those plants and trees started off as small, defenseless seeds. Once you tear a sprouting plant apart, it won't regenerate back to its readiness of growth, and it won't develop fruit. Just like humans, once they are gone, they can't resurrect and continue educating themselves for a better world. We can't kill our future generation. You would be destroying our country into flames, flames that are already destroying acres of land, along with many animal habitats. Waters contaminated. Humanity is being contaminated by racial divisions, violence, and hate. And what did you say? I think Islam. Yes. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. How is it possible that one of the richest countries during your presidency, including you, Mr. President, I'm really rich, isn't able to provide health care for all? Treat people like people, not like animals locked up in cages. Care for the homeless. Provide resources for our continued education of many generations to come. Support our minority groups. But you do have that urgency for money to be invested on a wall. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. And complain about giving up money on another matter that is very important to us. Mr. President, you for sure like to say, believe me, a lot. And believe me, her and Bill had a bad evening. Believe me. He still didn't believe me, but believe me, it is, okay? I guess you are running out of words. If you want us to believe in your words or promises, then you ought to take action and stop bragging about your intelligence. I know more about drones than anybody. Nobody knows much more about technology, this type of technology, certainly, than I... Which I doubt that it'd be higher than a dolphin's IQ. <laughs> Mr. President, if you're not willing to listen to us, together we will unite and get the job done by choosing our next 46th president of the United States of America. That isn't you. We will choose a president who will represent us all with dignity and respect. Good luck on tweeting your butt off, Mr. President. Sincerely, Leonid. Feels like nothing's really being done by our political leaders to like actually enact like real change to that. I understand what needs to be done. I understand like all change will happen from the bottom up. you guys know at the end of 2019 a virus was taking its form and becoming a global pandemic fortunately our government wasn't cautious enough to handle this threat effectively many of our healthcare workers passed away while saving other people not just health work healthcare workers but essential workers that provided resources to everyone who was impacted by this pandemic thank you for keeping our communities safe by wearing the mask. The last four years have been really hard on us. There comes to COVID, protests and riots, and a lot of other problems. But remember, we can get through this. We can move past this to create a better future. The Vice President-elect, um, we truly anticipate that this new administration will do a much better job in supporting our hospitals, our schools, we have those new vaccines um, distributed for all minorities and patients in the U.S. Also, we anticipate that they will work with experts to deal with environmental issues, inequality, racial injustices, and many more other issues. I 
hope for a better U.S. and for a better world, where people are treated as human beings. We can get through this pandemic if we all follow these rules, stay positive that things will get better, there's a bright future ahead. We need hope. We need resilience. We need grit. We can't stop fighting for what is right. This being said, I want to thank everyone out there who helped us in a lot of ways. Thank you for your service. Thank you. I also want to thank all the doctors who have worked so hard for us. We appreciate you. I hope that even with downfalls, that we can continue to pick ourselves back up again. So keep standing up and keep fighting for what is right. Don't ever stop getting back up. Cheer up, we got this. Hello, good evening, everyone. I hope that I am um, on live right now. Can't see my face, but I'm just gonna keep on introducing everyone and everything. Um, very, very excited to have you all today. Thank you so much for joining us, um, especially after the events yesterday. Uh, it is very important to hear these words. So thank you for having us. Uh, thank you, Thomas Edison High School students and artists and crew, as well as Project Success. So we're gonna get to the portion of where we um, chat to some of the artists. Uh, and whenever they are ready, we have Lane Ed and we have Claudia with us as well. So whenever you're all set, friends, you can turn on your videos and we can chat a little bit. And I would love, hello! <laughs> I would love to go around and uh, introduce yourself and tell us like what you did in the the play as well as what grade you're in. Okay, I can go first. Hi, I'm Claudia. I'm in 11th grade this year and I'm part of Edison Tech Crew. This is my second year doing it and I was one of the editors in this performance. Yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Leonid. I'm in 12th grade and I was one of the performers in the film and also I created some scenes in it. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so my first question to you both is how am I finding you today after viewing this piece? 
Um, personally, I'm pretty proud of how it turned out, seeing as we had to do everything over Zoom and we couldn't really edit everything as one single group. So everybody was paired up with a performer and was working in those small groups. And I think we all did a pretty good job of doing that. Thank you, Claudia. Yeah, yeah honestly, I feel happy with the final project. Um, everyone's like art piece was combined in a single film with the help of the editing tech crew with the project success. And yeah, I'm really like proud of everyone's work. You should be. It was pretty awesome to see the final product, right? From beginning to end. We've, we all have been working for the past uh, month working together collaboratively. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Claudia, I'm going to talk to you specifically about editing and then I'll jump over to Lane Ed about performing, but talk to me a little bit about your process. I know you touched a little bit about um, the editing stuff, but um, tell me a little bit about what drew you into this piece and how did you work together with your uh, partner and artist? Yeah, so my group was a little bit different. We had a couple, we had one too many tech group people to have one-on-one -on -one groups. So I was in a group of three. I was working with Shamarki on his project. And when we first met him, he had not had his text yet. He didn't have a very strong idea of what he wanted to do. So we helped him communicate his ideas into a script and then we helped him film his videos. And then later, Bashar and I, who was the other one in my group, we edited it together on iMovie. Yeah, I, maybe I can touch a little bit about um, how we came across this process and everything was, um, we worked a little bit with the artist um, through writing prompts and just um, uh, really kind of, talking about how we are specifically where we are at the moment. We were, went through the election together and, um, and finding out like what the, the election results were and everything. So there was a lot to touch in on, right? So yeah, I could see why uh, Shamar K was trying to figure out what is it that they wanted to talk about. Thanks, Claudia. All right, Lane Ed, how was your process? Yeah, so my main focus on creating this scene was really to express myself, my honest reaction and opinion to many of the events that happened ever since our current president took office in 2017. And so for many of us, you know, he showed lack of leadership in addressing like social issues, climate issues that impacted many of us, our communities, our environment, our minorities, and so it seemed like he cared about his own self and to others. So with that, I decided to create a monologue with a series of pictures and images that would go along with the words that was saying in my monologue with the help of Paige, that she was one of the uh, members of the Edison Tech crew. And with that, we followed the outline that I created for the scene. And Really, we just like work together and just put everything together. And although I didn't like cover all the social issues that I wanted, but my other cast members were able to do so. And I'm really like, so glad that they did it. So, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah, that's, um, it sounded like there was a lot of focus. Um, all the other various things that you can talk about, right, Lynette? There's a lot. Um, so I know we're on Facebook right now. So if anybody has any questions whatsoever, please jot it into the chat and we can ask Leonette. I think we lost Claudia. I hope, hopefully we can get her back. Um, but I have one last question for you, Leonette. Um, why do you think this work is important right now? Yeah, so I think it's really important to know, let our audience know like how our younger generation the people of my age are feeling right now towards the president because you know um a lot of things have happened and you know um we do care the decisions that the president and other government officials take whether it's bad or not because at the end of the day it'll impact us in a lot of ways like it'll affect us like the way we interact with other people and so we're we were young like I know we're kids, but we don't play video games like all day. No, we do watch the news. We 
we are on social media a lot and we do hear a lot of stuff that's going on and you know I feel like people like a lot of times say that the young people are like ignorance but you know that's not the case um but yeah I truly want like everyone to know how we feel about it so yeah absolutely Claudia we're glad you had you came back <laughs> I <was laughs> cut out. sorry about that that's how Zoom works and we're <laughs> live and so it's yeah, it, it's the matter of the fact. So, um, so my question for Lane Ed was, why is this uh, work important right now? And I'd love to toss that over to you. Yeah, so I think it's especially important with these recent events from yesterday and stuff that we can see what a big impact the president has had on the states, either whether it be good or bad. It's a very, very strong impact. And I think that our play kind of shows that message and tells people we have to create change if we want to see it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, I know that there's a lot of comments right now on the page, um, a lot of really good things that are being said about your work. And so I just want to say, um, take a look at those. But also I want to say thank you so much for sharing what you what you've done for this piece. It is so important. Um, and I really appreciate the collaborative work that you all both have done with the artists. Um, that's one thing that, that I was not taught with at an early age is to collaborate with one another. And so it was definitely one of my missions to do that with you all, because um, I might have gone to school and college and gotten my degree, but what is happening right now is your experience at the moment and it's different than it is at my age and with a child. Uh, but that does not mean that it's not important. And so I really wanted to hear your perspective. So I really appreciate everything that you've given to this. So you should be so, so proud. Um, so that's all I have for you both. Thank you again. Um, just letting you all know on Facebook, we will continue this tomorrow as well, 7 p.m. And as well on Saturday. So I hope you can join us. Thank you, Leonid and Claudia. And thank you, Max, <laughs> who's hidden right now. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful night and take care of yourselves. Have a good one.